This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I haven't yet done a tutorial on creating horror and the macabre, so this one's for fans that enjoy a good scare. This document is 1920 by 1080 pixels with a resolution of 150 pixels per inch. I downloaded this wall from cgtextures.com and I'll provide the link to this image in the video descriptions area. Click on the new layer icon to make a new layer and we'll fill it with black. Since black is our foreground color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Go to Filter, Render, and Fibers. We'll make the variance 5 and the strength 10. Press Ctrl or Command plus L to call up your Levels window and slide your input and output levels until you achieve a contrast you like. Open your Channels panel and click on the circular icon in the lower left. This will create a selection of all the tonal values of the image. Open your Layers panel and drag the streak layer to the trash since we have the selection. Click on the New Layer icon to make a new layer. To see the quick mask, press the letter Q. We need to invert it, so press Q again and then Control shift i or Command shift i on a Mac. Click on the foreground color and choose a dark red. I'm using A2 and four zeros. To fill the selection with this color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. To delete the selection, press Ctrl or Command plus D. The color is a bit too bright, so I'll click on the Adjustment Layer icon and choose Hue Saturation. I'll decrease the saturation to about minus 20. We'll click on the streaks and change the Blend Mode to Color Burn. Make your top layer active. Call up your Type Tool. Open your Character Panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and choose Character. Choose a font. I'm using Cold Night for Alligators, which you can download for free at defont.com. Click on the color box and choose the same color as you did before. Type out your text and to reposition it, call up your Move Tool, click on your text and move it. If you'd like to move some of your letters up or down individually, press T to call up your Type Tool, highlight your letter, and slide the baseline. Do this with each letter you'd like to move. I'll move it down, and I'd like to angle it. I'll press Ctrl or Command plus T to call up my Transform Tool. I'll go to a corner, and when I see a double curved arrow, I'll rotate it clockwise. To reposition it, I'll just click inside the transform and move it. When you're happy with the size and position of your text, press Enter or Return. Close your text panels and change your text blend mode to color burn. I'll reduce the fill to 75%. I'll click on the adjustment layer icon, choose hue saturation, and reduce the saturation to minus 28. Presently, this adjustment layer affects all the layers beneath it in the Layers panel. However, I just want it to affect the text underneath it. To do this, click on this Clipping Mask icon. As soon as we click on it, notice the adjustment layer slides to the right. This tells us it's only adjusting the text layer. Click on the Streak layer to make it active, and we'll make the fill to about 75%. Click on the top layer and we'll make a composite snapshot of our entire image. Press Ctrl Shift Alt E or Command Shift Option E on a Mac. Let's create atmosphere by adding shadows and a streak of light. Make a copy of the layer and press Z to call up your zoom tool. Press Alt or Option as you click on your image to zoom it back. Call up your pen tool and make a shape that's wider at the upper left and narrower near the bottom right. Open your Paths panel and click on the icon in the upper right. Choose Make Selection. I'll make the feather radius 87 pixels. Open back up the Layers panel and click on the Layer Mask icon. This will make a layer mask next to the active layer. We need to invert the layer mask, so press Ctrl or Command I. To fit the entire image on your screen, press Ctrl or Command plus zero. 
Click on the top layer to make it active and call up your levels window. Adjust your output and input levels to the brightness, contrast, and details you'd like for your shadows. The last step is to give our image a downward angular perspective. Make a composite snapshot and reduce the size of your image on your screen. Call up your transform tool and go to a top corner. Press Shift and Control or Shift and Command and drag it to the left. When you've angled it enough, press Enter or Return. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.